Hello and welcome to the Penguin Prof channel. In today's episode, we're going to get into the cardiac pressure volume loops. We're going to do it Penguin Prof style and we're going to play with water balloons. Yeah, I got Fabio Chem to help me make some water balloon mess so we could give you guys some visuals so that you could remember these relationships between pressure and volume. We went there. The goals today, we're going to be looking at, obviously, pressure-volume relationships, that isovolumic contraction story, and even, yes, the Wiggers diagram. We're going to look at the ECG, LVP, and LVVs, you know, all of your favorite acronyms. Before we get into it, I got to ask for your support. Please take one second if you find these videos helpful and click those buttons below. You can also support my work by checking out Audible and downloading a free audiobook of your choice. I just finished a fantastic book about sleep, and I think you guys would really enjoy it. It was amazing. Check it out. We're going to talk about the heart, not so much the anatomy of the heart, but the physiology of the heart and the heart as a pump. So we're going to simplify that quite a bit. And in your Wiggers diagram and most of the clinical pathology, we're focusing on the left side of the heart. So we're going to go ahead and cut that heart in half. Oh, I know that hurts. And I simplified it even more in my little drawing here. I, yeah, no judgment. So in my drawing, we've got the left atrium, the left ventricle. These tubes, we've got the pulmonary veins represented and the aorta. And the valves we're looking at include the bicuspid, also called the mitral valve, and the aortic semilunar valve. And we've got to keep track of only two things. The heart cycles between contraction and relaxation, right? Systole and diastole. By the way, many people pronounce the terminal E, so you'll hear it as systole and diastole. And blood moves from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure until equilibrium is reached. So we're going to keep those two things in mind, and we're going to go through the basic phases of the cardiac cycle. It's a pump, guys. you got to fill it. you got to squeeze it. You've got to eject the blood, and you've got to relax. That's it. Those are the four basic stages. There's some intermediate stages we're going to get into later. And, of course, we've got to use the correct vocabulary. So we're going to talk about ventricular filling. We're going to talk about isovolumic contraction. We're going to explain what that is. Ventricular ejection, squirting the blood out, and isovolumic relaxation. You guys ready for the graph? Let's get into it. This graph shows the relationship between the pressure in the ventricle in millimeters of mercury and the volume of blood in the ventricle in milliliters. So taking those four basic stages that we just looked at, let's put them on the graph. So from A to B, we're filling the ventricle. You notice the volume is increasing, but the pressure really doesn't change all that much. From B to C, though, that's the big change in pressure. Now notice the volume hasn't changed. That's why we call this isovolumic. Iso means same. Volume obviously refers to the volume of blood inside. So from B to C, we're squeezing, but the blood isn't going anywhere. And I'm going to explain to you why that's such a big deal. At letter C, the aortic valve opens and we continue to squeeze. And this is the blood ejection. So you notice the pressure continues to go up because it's still squeezing, but the volume on the X is going down because the blood is leaving the ventricle via the aorta. From D to A, we've got to relax. You always got to relax. So the ventricle relaxes and the volume, again, does not change. So we call this isovolumic relaxation. So now you've got your four basic stages and the four basic parts of this pressure volume loop. Not too bad. You're going to get this question. What would happen if the aortic valve opened here instead of at letter C? Really, a related question is, what's the importance of isovolumic contraction? What is the big deal about this? And we're going to give you a visual to help you to remember it. So Fabio, Kem, and I played with water balloons like I showed you at the beginning. This is the popping of a water balloon without squeezing it first. Oh, that is just too cool, isn't it? I could watch that for a long time. Okay, but check out the difference, what it's going to look like when Fabio Chem squeezes the water balloon before he pops it. Oh my gosh, and the water goes everywhere. That's what I wanted you to see. So we're going to take that analogy back to the graph. From A to B, you fill your water balloon. From B to C, you squeeze the balloon 
but don't pop it yet. So we're building the pressure. Notice that is isovolumic. Now from C to D, that's when we're going to keep squeezing and pop the thing. So the water is leaving the balloon, obviously, but we keep squeezing it. Now from D to A, we can't simulate that with a water balloon, obviously, because it's destroyed. But of course, in reality, that ventricle relaxes. And that is a water balloon version of your pressure volume curve. Now, again, I just want to reiterate this. Increasing the pressure before the blood is ejected is what powers the blood through the body. So keep this in mind. If you pop before squeezing, you're just not going to have enough pressure to get the blood where it needs to go. You need the squeeze and then pop. Look at the incredible amount of resistance. Remember the heart is about the size of your fist and we've got a lot of tubes. It's an insane amount of tubes, a huge amount of resistance that the heart has to pump this blood through. That's why we need the power, and without isovolumic contraction before the aortic valve opens, we just couldn't do it. Now, let's look at this beast, the Wiggers diagram, and I want to emphasize to you that by understanding the pressure volume curve and those four basic phases, we're going to be able to figure this out. So we've got these four phases. Now with the Wiggers, we've got to increase and add a few more. Do not panic. Now we've got to add atrial contraction because we're going to actually look at the whole ECG. So we've got to look at the atria. Now we've got isovolumic contraction already. This ventricular ejection actually occurs in two phases, what we call rapid and slow. Isovolumic relaxation, you guys already know, we looked at that. And then we have the ventricular filling, which occurs both rapidly and slowly. Again, it's not that bad. The reason why we break up the rapid and slow is simply to reflect the fact that as the pressure gradients change, that's going to cause the rate of filling or ejection to change. So we're going to look at this. So on the top, we've got the traditional Wiggers view. And on the bottom, that's the pressure volume curve that we just did. You guys ready? Okay, we're going to do this. We're going to start with atrial contraction because we start with the P wave of the ECG at the top. And you notice that the left ventricular volume is already maxed out. It's already full, but the pressure is very low. Now with this isovolumic contraction, we've got an increase in pressure but the volume stays the same. We're building the pressure, right? So we can power the blood through the whole body. You notice that corresponds with the QRS complex of the ECG. Now we have rapid ventricular ejection. So we've got the opening of the aortic valve and a huge pressure gradient, which is what causes the blood to be ejected so rapidly. As the blood leaves and the heart finishes its squeeze, the rate of ejection slows down right? It's just a matter of the muscle sort of running out of power and the pressure gradient really being reduced. Now we round the corner and now we start our relaxation. So you will notice that the left ventricular pressure is going to be falling, but the left ventricular volume is staying the same. Again, it's isovolumic. And finally, we've got to fill that ventricle. First, the filling is rapid because the pressure gradient is high, but as the ventricle continues to fill, the rate at which it fills slows down. So we call it slow passive ventricular filling. And ladies and gentlemen, that's it. When you put that back on the full diagram, you'll notice there's a few things that you can add in without too much difficulty, including the aortic pressure. You notice that it pretty much follows ventricular pressure, although you do have that little notch in there called the dichrotic notch where the aortic valve closes. And we have the atrial pressure, which really does not ever get that high, and the heart sounds. You'll notice the first sound we call S1, that's the shutting of the mitral valve. The second sound, S2, is the closing of the aortic valve. Your wiggers may also show S3 and S4, those are abnormal heart sounds. And ladies and gentlemen, that's it. As always, I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for visiting the Penguin Prof channel. Please show your support by clicking those buttons below. Like, share, and subscribe. Join me on Facebook. Follow on Twitter. Good luck.